Hello everyone, this is Dr. Lennon and we're going to go over a few examples on improper integrals that relate to some of the questions from our homework. Uh, so let's just jump right in. Um, so this first one, find the area under the curve 25 over x cubed from x equals 1 to x equals t. Uh, on the homework they ask you to do this for a different, a, a, comp, uh, a varying set of values for t, but anyway basically um, if you're going from 1 to t uh, which is the general idea for an improper integral. Usually we just want to take the limit as t goes to infinity. Um, anyway, what that looks like, so the area uh, is going to be equal to the integral from 1 to t of this 25 over x cubed dx. And when we want to integrate that, usually it's helpful to change that into exponent notation. So write it as 25x to the negative 3 dx. So uh, we just take the antiderivative. So this is, uh, uh, we add one to the power, then divide by that number. So uh, it's gonna be 25 x to the negative second divided by negative two. Uh, and that's from one to t. So again, we can simplify that maybe to negative 12.5. Uh, and we can write it over x squared if we want. Uh, again, this is from 1 to t. So uh, we're going to write that as negative 12.5 over t squared minus negative 12.5 over 1 squared. So that simplifies to minus 12.5 over t squared plus 12.5. So for instance, if we wanted to uh, compute it from, say, uh, I don't know, uh, from 1 to 12, something like that, or 1 to 10, so like, like they might ask, uh, what is the value of t equals 10? So then you'd just be doing the integral from 1 to 10 of this quantity, which was what, uh, 25 over x cubed dx. Well, we have the formula for the antiderivative right there, so you can just plug in 10 now for t. So we get negative 12.5 over 10 squared uh, plus 12.5, and you can just type that into your calculator, and uh, you get uh, 12.375 That's the value. Okay, so that's it for the first example. Pretty straightforward. Um, again, just the process of finding the antiderivative, but using a variable as one of your limit points. Uh, the second example, we want to determine if the integral converges. Converges or diverges, and um, if it converges, we always want to say what the value is, the exact value, if we can find it. So let's recall something that we talked a little bit about in class known as the P-series test. So usually with some uh, variable substitutions, you can uh, make reduce a lot of these cases down to the P-series test. So the P-series test says, suppose, uh, I don't know, I think, maybe we say uh, A is some value greater than zero. Uh, so then there's two cases if we look at the integral from, say, A to infinity of 1 over x to the p power um, dx. Um, 1, well, it diverges when p is equal to, uh, less than or equal to, actually, less than or equal to 1. So remember, the, the case, the, the, the borderline case, the when p is equal to 1, that's known as the harmonic series. Um, so recall the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. We saw how that related to the harmonic series, which is a series of a bunch of 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4. We kind of saw that that could be a Riemann sum of this curve 1 over x. Um, so this, this curve right here diverges. Um, that was the case that we showed in class. So this one diverges 
And that's going to be true if your power is anything smaller. So say you had 1 over the square root of x, well then you would have a power of 1 half in the denominator, and that would diverge as well. Um, so it's going to converge when uh, p is greater than 1. So that's the p-series test. So from just a couple of things, uh, our integral doesn't exactly look like that, but we could perform a variable substitution, and multiplication by a constant isn't going to do anything. So uh, we can kind of see that uh, this, this integral that we have is going to converge. So let's look at that again. We have the integral from uh, 3 to infinity of... Uh, Let's go ahead and look 6 over x minus 2 to the 3 over 2. All right, so uh, if you really want to apply that, so we know this, this converges, so this converges. By the p-series test. with p equals to 3 over 2. Now, you know, you might not see that directly from this, but you could do, you could perform it very easily with a variable substitution. So just let u equal x minus 2. Um, so du is equal to dx. And then we could transform this integral using those substitutions. So if x is going to infinity, u is going to infinity. So the top of the integral is going to infinity. The bottom limit, if you plug in 3 for x, 3 minus 2 would be a u value of 1, and then your integral would be 6 over u to the 3 over 2 du. So now it's very recognizable that this integral is going to diverge by the p-series test with p equal to 3 over 2. Okay, so let's figure out actually what it goes to. Um, so what it goes to, we actually do have to do this transformation. So now we just... Uh, change this to an improper integral. So we replace infinity by t and take a limit. So we say this is the limit as t goes to infinity of uh, the integral from 1 to t of 6u to the negative 3 over 2 du. And then as usual, this is a limit as t goes to infinity of... Uh, so we have to... Add 1 to the power and then multiply by the reciprocal of that number. So when you add 1 to the power, you get negative 1 half. So we need to multiply 6 in front by the reciprocal, which is going to be negative 2. So we have negative 2 times 6, u to the negative 1 half from 1 to t. So that is the limit as t goes to infinity of uh, negative 12 u to the minus one-half, which is just um, the limit as t goes to infinity of uh, negative 12 times t to the minus one-half. Uh, and then we're going to have two negatives there, so that's going to be plus uh, 12 on the end there. So... This is where the limits really apply because, as we can see, the uh, the uh, first term can be rewritten as negative 12 divided by the square root of t um, plus 12. And then essentially as t goes to infinity, this fraction right here, this negative 12 over the square root of t, this guy goes to 0. So your answer just comes out to 12 for this problem. And that's it for this example. <coughs> so uh, really it's usually when you take these limits when something converge you can kind of write it down as a numerical part plus some part that's going to zero at least for our examples that we're looking at. Okay so let's do a third example. Um, so this one we want to determine if this thing converges or diverges and uh, from there, we want to, uh, if it converges, find the value. So this, to me, looks like a variable substitution, a u substitution, because uh, the u is going to be replacing x squared plus 24. And from there, 
uh, you can take the derivative and immediately recognize it's going to be some constant times x, which is going to replace the numerator of your integrand. So du is 2x dx. Uh, again, the way I show you typically, I like to just solve for du. So du over 2x. I think most students find that more intuitive than uh, using some other replacements. Okay, so now our integral transform to u. Um, Oh, sorry, I, there is actually limits on this problem as well. So this goes from 0 to infinity, I believe. So I left the limits off when I wrote the example beforehand. Um, so again, let's replace those limits. So let's think about the limits. So the x equals 0 limit. Uh, if x is 0 u is going to be 0 squared plus 24, so that means u is going to be 24. And our other limit, uh, as x approaches infinity, um, what happens to u? Um, well, if x is going to infinity, u is also going to infinity. Okay, so our integral now is going to become the integral from 24 to infinity. And then the uh, we're going to write x on top u squared on bottom, and then we multiply by du over 2x. So our x's can cross off here. So now our integral just becomes uh, 24 to infinity of 1 over u squared, which is u to the negative 2 du. So this, again, is going to uh, converge by the p-series test. with p equal to 2. So remember that u to the negative second means 1 over u squared. So um, now we can go ahead and uh, continue by changing this to a limit. So this is going to be the limit as t goes to infinity. Of uh, uh, So let's do the antiderivative. So the antiderivative uh, add 1 to the power, you get u to the negative first, and then we're dividing by negative 1, which is the same as multiplying by negative 1, and we're going from 24 to t. So this becomes the limit as t goes to infinity of negative t to the minus 1 uh, minus uh, negative 24 to the minus 1. So uh, we're taking the limit as t goes to infinity of minus 1 over t plus 1 over 24. Well, again, uh, when we look at the limit of negative 1 over t, well, as the denominator gets very big, your fraction gets very small. So this term right here is going to 0. So we're just left with a 1 over 24, which is our answer. So the integral converges, and it converges to the value 1 over 24. Okay, so on to one more example here. So this one was specifically requested. Um, so the thing is, we're going from negative infinity to infinity. So how do you apply a limit there? Well, let's recall <clears throat> we have a uh, property about integrals that says, Essentially, if you're going from, uh, so suppose uh, A is less than C is less than B, okay? Then uh, if you have some integral of some function, say from A to B, of some f of x dx, then what you can do is you can actually split it up with that point in the middle. So we can go from A to C, of f of x dx, and then add that going from the point in the middle, c, to the final point, b, on the uh, interval f of x dx. So that's what we're going to do here when we look at the example. So we're going from negative infinity to infinity. Well, we know 0 has to be between those two points. So let's just go ahead and use 0 and split that up into two integrals. So this becomes, um, so when we look at the integral from negative infinity to infinity of 19x e to the minus x squared dx. 
This is the same as the integral from negative infinity to zero of 19x e to the minus x squared uh, dx plus the integral from zero to infinity of 19x e to the minus x squared dx. I'm also trying to think, um, uh, I believe this function has origin symmetry, which means if it has origin symmetry, then that would mean that the uh, that would mean that the part above the graph is the same as the part below, which would mean the integral in fact just evaluates to zero. So I think we did this one in class. Um, so let me think about that. So origin symmetry. Um, so so rather than do the whole rigmarole of of using this method and and seeing that okay both parts converge and they converge to opposite numbers um, is that so uh, recall uh, uh, a function f of x is said to be odd if uh, f of minus x equals minus f of x um, and one thing to note is odd functions have origin symmetry. So sometimes if you remember some of these facts, you can save yourself a little bit of work. So let's go ahead and see if this function has origin symmetry. So if we call f of x the integrand up there, 19x e to the minus x squared, um, what we want to do is we want to look at f of minus x and see if that is the negative of this formula. So f of minus x would be 19 times minus x times e to the minus minus x quantity squared, which is negative 19x e to the minus x squared, which is uh, exactly just the opposite of f of x. So indeed, this function has origin symmetry. So because our function has origin symmetry, uh, that actually means that this whole integral just evaluates to zero. So uh, that, that's one more fact. Um, so here's a fact. Um, if f of x is an odd function, and we integrate from, say, negative a to a. Uh, uh, so actually, I should say then, not and. So sorry about that. So then the integral from negative a to a of f of x uh, dx is equal to zero. So that's exactly what we have here. So our integral, uh, so hence the integral from negative infinity to infinity uh, 19x e to the minus x squared dx equals zero. So that saves us time from actually doing the integral. So we could do it the way that we thought um, uh, previously. So this method up here was going to work, but this uh, would require an equation by substitution. So uh, using odd functions or odd function facts is easier. And let's go ahead and check just to make sure since I didn't actually do the integral that this is uh, what it should come out to. So uh, that is this example, I believe. So we think it's convergent and we think it goes to zero. So let's go ahead and check that. So we submit. And all right, we got it right. So using the facts are a little bit easier there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the very last example uh, we wanted to look at. Um, so here we have the present value of a perpetuity that pays $600 per month at 4% uh, annually. So let's recall the present value formula uh, from chapter six. Uh, so the present value here of some income stream f of t is the integral from zero to capital T of f of t, where that's the annual income stream times e to the negative rt dt, where r is the rate it's invested at as a decimal. 
So here, uh, f of t, our problem, they give $600 per month, so $600 times 12, which is uh, $7,200 per year, is our annual income stream. So our present value is given by the integral from 0 to infinity, because it's a perpetuity, um, of 7,200 times e to the negative 0 0.04 t dt. So again, we just want to write this as a limit, the limit as t goes to infinity of uh, 7,200 e to the negative 0 0.04 t from 0 to t. So uh, doing the antiderivative, this is just going to be the limit as t goes to infinity of 7200e to the negative 0 0.04 divided by negative 0 0.04 from 0 to t. Um, so this is going to be the limit as t goes to infinity of... Um, so it'll actually turn out to be negative... Um, uh, I think let's see, uh, 7,200, yeah, so that's going to be 180,000, so uh, negative 180,000 e to the negative 0 0.04 t minus negative 180,000, because when you plug in, uh, sorry, I forgot my t up here, when you plug in 0 for t in the exponent, e to the 0 power just becomes 1, and uh, when you're dividing, so this, uh, this first term here, actually, let me write one more step just to make it clear. This is the limit as t goes to infinity of negative 180,000 over e to the 0 0.04t plus 180,000. So as t goes to infinity, this e to the 0 0.04 in the denominator goes to infinity. So this first term goes to zero. So the present value of our perpetuity is $180,000. So that's the answer to that one. So we just have to remember our present value formula and then it becomes an improper integral when we're looking at a perpetuity. Okay, so hopefully that answers any questions you have on uh, the improper integral homework. And uh, if not, let me know and I will get back to those on Monday. So have a good weekend and everyone stay safe. Dr. Levin signing off.